Hey everybody, my name is Ted Forbes and welcome back to another episode of The Art of Photography. Today I wanna to change things up a little bit on the show and I wanna get back into some technical processes and some stuff that we haven't really covered in a long time. And namely, I want to talk about color film development or C41 process. And I want to take a look at what it is. And I have never done C41 before, I'm going to be perfectly honest. And so I thought this would be a great catalyst for a show um, where we could go ahead and talk about what all's involved. I'm gonna go ahead and order the supplies and we're actually going to learn this together for the first time. So what all is involved in doing C41? Well, C41 is a color process, and so what it does is it's a dye-based emulsion. What this means is that you're going to have, in the end, a color negative. So it's not like a slide film or a transparency or an E6 process. C41 is a negative, so it's much like black and white film in that regard. So what all is involved in the color development process? Well, essentially, there's four stages or four chemicals that you're going to run your film through. The first stage you have is the color developer. What the color developer does is simply develop the emulsion layers that you have on the film. Then you have a bleach, and what this this does is it converts the silver to silver halide. Third, you have a fix, and what the fix does is it actually dissolves the silver halide. And finally, you have a stabilizer, and what this does is it finishes the wash and the whole process. So, what is important in developing color film? Well, the first thing you need to do is your technique needs to be consistent, which means basically, if you remember when doing black and white film, you have what we call agitation, where essentially you're moving the film around within the chemicals now and then to basically get fresh developer or fresh chemicals up against the film emulsion. And this is really important. You don't want to over agitate and you certainly don't want to under agitate in most cases. The other consistent that you're going to need, and this is very important when doing color film, black and white film is very forgiving. Color film is not, and your temperature needs to be spot on. And when working with C41, this is a much warmer process than what we did with black and white film. So you're going to be developing, and your chemicals all need to stay right at about 100 degrees Fahrenheit, which is warm, And but we just need to take some precautions to make sure that that temperature stays consistent during the whole process. So without saying anything else, I think it's a good time to go over, and let's go ahead and look at what we need to develop color film. So we're gonna take a look at all the things that you're gonna to need to do C41 color film at home. And as I mentioned, I've gone ahead and I've ordered all my chemicals and all my stuff. And in the next video, next week, we're going to actually show the process of developing C41 film. So if you wanna do this along with me, uh, this is what you need to order. Now, one of the things I've gone through and I've made little links for you for all the stuff. And uh, the first thing that I want to tell you about is we're gonna be working with a kit here. So this is the Tetanol C41 process kit. And I've linked all these to either b and Amazon. Um, if you have other sources where you want to get these, it's fine too, but this is what we're going to be working with. Um, the Tetanol kit uh, it processes, it says it processes eight 35 millimeter rolls per liter, and this is a liter of chemical here. So you'll basically, for 2350, you'll be able to get eight rolls of film done. And it will store and it will keep, um, but I would recommend just because the quantity of developer that we're buying is so small, um, it probably would make more sense to try to get eight rolls of film through here. And I've heard people actually get more through here, but you know, when you start pushing things, that's where your results are going to vary. And if something is mission critical on a roll of film, uh, I wouldn't recommend pushing your developer past its limits. The other thing I want to say about that too is if you've never done this before, just go out and shoot a test roll of film and just get it developed. Don't make it something where it's shots that your life depends on, <laughs> you know, for you know, whether it's portraits for a job or something. I would not do that if you've never done this before you know we're the aim here is to get our skills together and get this going um, the other thing I'll say about this is this is a simplified process I talked a little bit ago about the four stages in this and you basically have a bleach and a fixer um, that go in here and what they've done is these are kind of a condensed version of that so it's what they call a blix in here and so that's what we're going to be working with but it's essentially the same thing so that is the developer this is the core that you're going to need these are all the chemicals um, you just order them they come in a box it's a one-stop shop thing order two kits if you want to do more or whatever it is that you're interested in doing so that is the developer now there are some general tools that you're going to need and if you've never done any developing before um, or if you've never done color film before there's a couple that you'll definitely want um, for instance I have on here a graduated cylinder so you're probably going to want that to do some measuring with uh, we've also put a stirring paddle funnel you know you can find these anywhere but these are just some quick links and you can order them all at one time they're not expensive so we're looking at three bucks here four dollars there ten dollars here stuff like that. Um, I would recommend getting some amber storage bottles if you are going to mix and store your film. Um, also, I, th these are the essential ones, especially if you've never done color film before. And I know this is going to seem really stupid, but I linked on Amazon to a Rubbermaid dish pan here. Um, you can get one bigger. Uh, it just depends on how much space and how much room you need. But what we're going to do is actually fill this with water. Then we're going to put containers into the water. 
and then you're going to put your chemicals in those containers. And then what this allows you to do is control your temperature. And when you're going to need to heat this up to 100 degrees Fahrenheit. And so I would, you know, fill this with water and then you're going to place uh, your chemicals into the water and then, you know, they'll obviously adjust temperature wise through the glass or plastic container. Um, but this is how you're going to get everything to be the same temperature and keep it consistent. Also, because we are heating things up and not cooling them down, I would recommend getting an aquarium heater. Now I realize I put a 300 watt aquarium heater in here and just because I've never done this um, I assume more power just means you're going to have a little quicker temperature control um, someone feel free to correct me in the show notes if this is complete overkill um, leave a comment and let me know but anyway you're going to need an aquarium uh, heater and this one has a built-in thermostat and so allows this or this allows us to set the temperature and maintain it consistently and that is the most crucial thing uh, in doing color film development is you do want your temperature to remain consistent if your temperature does not remain consistent and starts drifting then you could have color shifts, you could have problems with development, and remember, everything needs to be consistent. So those are the big things that you need. Just some other things you might want to consider that I put down here, um, a dark changing bag. This is like a windbreaker with no neck. You basically put your film and your, your film canisters in there your Patterson reels, and I recommend Patterson reels, and I'll get to that in a second. Um, and you're going to get your film off the out of the canister, get the paper back if you're doing 120, and you're going to get it onto the reel that way. Um, the deal with film is you can't just do a red safe light. It does need to be in complete darkness. It is that sensitive. And so it's a good idea probably to get some just trash rolls of film if you've never practiced spooling it on before. Um, I'll also link up to a video in the show notes. I haven't done it yet, but I'd talk about how to get film on a tank. And uh, Patterson tanks I like a lot better than the steel tanks and it's personal preference. Main reason is because for 35 millimeter, the Pattersons very frequently are mis or sorry, the steel tanks are frequently misaligned and that can be a problem because you'll, you'll tear up your film and crease it as you're putting it on the, the tanks or the spools. And I don't recommend that the Patterson tanks are plastic. You just walk your film on. It's easier to do in the dark, very easy. Um, and we'll talk about film in a second. Uh, make sure you have a pair of scissors. I know that's obvious too. And then I've linked up to the Patterson universal reel and tank and these reels basically they have a little locking mechanism on them and I don't know if you can tell from the picture or not I'll bring it up uh, but they can they're resizable so basically you twist these in opposite directions it comes undone and then you can expand or contract it and lock it again and so this will do everything from 35 126 127 uh, 120 and 220 very easily now some people have asked me about doing sheet film in the past and I would not recommend starting learning how to do this with sheet film the reason is is because remember you have to keep those temperatures consistent and we're just going to work with some basic stuff here. So what I would do is I would learn how to do it on roll film, either 35 mil or 120 mil, uh, medium format, and do it that way. Uh, if you start with sheet film, I just think you're going to have your hands full trying to keep temperatures consistent. So learn the process, learn what you're doing first, and then you can graduate up and it'll be pretty obvious how you do sheet film after that. So those are essentially the items that you're going to need to do this. Finally, I have put my link to Color C41 Film. Now, this is something I did, I believe, last summer, but I actually put together a page that has all the available films that you can get for 35 millimeter, 120, uh, and sheet film uh, for C41. And so this is what you're looking at. Um, Again, if this is your first time to process it, uh, I would not go crazy and spend a lot of money. And again, you know, the chances that you might mess up the first time are pretty high, and that's okay. That's how we learn. Uh, but remember, I would not get expensive film and put crazy stuff on it. Uh, one tip that I can give you, it's not on this page here, but I have done this myself in the past when I need film just to experiment with, is get on eBay or something like that and see if somebody is selling off an entire box of unused 35 millimeter film. That way you can practice with it. Uh, you can goof around with it. You might even find 120 and you know, nothing is mission critical. Once you have the process down, um, you know, either that, or I would, I would stick to things that are kind of over the counter stuff you can get at the grocery store. Um, you know, Kodak gold, if you can still find it. Um, you know, but anyway, on here is a list of all the stuff that you should be able to get really easily. Um, a couple recommendations. If you want to get some nicer film to work with, um, the Kodak Portas are all beautiful films. Uh, the Kodak Gold works fine. It's not my favorite of the lot. Um, and then this Kodak Ector is really nice. Um, it has really deep saturated reds. It's just a very beautiful film. And and if you want, you know, more of a vivid saturated look uh, to your work, um, Kodak Ektar is a wonderful choice for that. The Fujis all work wonderful as 
well. The Superior is amazing. I've used Relia before. Um, the Pro 100H is, you know, I kind of guess more of their equivalent towards the Gold 200 and 400, but for Kodak. But you can also get the um, kind of some of the experimental Roly and Lomography films. But, you know, I would say for your first time, I would keep this kind of sane. And what I would do is I would stick to Kodak or Fuji or get some cheaper film to experiment with. And just remember, we're here to learn. And, you know, the first time I ever did black and white film, I messed up royally. I didn't know what agitation meant. I didn't know any of the techniques involved. So, you know, you got to understand that you're going to have to learn the process. And it's not hard, but you might not get it the first time, and that's okay. So what I'm saying is, is, is I wouldn't go crazy with either really expensive film or with, you know, mission-critical pictures on your camera that you're trying to develop because, you know, you may mess up. And the point here is to learn first, and then you can trust yourself with more mission-critical stuff. So anyway, um, again, this is all linked up in the show notes. And uh, if you go to the theartofphotography.tv, um, that's where you can find all these under this episode, and I've linked everything for you, generally either B&H or Amazon, but you can find them elsewhere as well if you have another source you'd rather use. But anyway, I've got everything ordered, and next week we're going to take a look at the actual process. So that's basically everything you're going to need to develop a color film at home. And as I mentioned to you before, um, there are a number of reasons why I've never done it. And I think it's kind of interesting that I'm going to be learning this and showing you at the same time. So. I know that some of you who have watched the show, because when I've gone to meetups, uh, have told me that they do color film at home. And if you have done color film, I wish you would take an opportunity and leave a comment below. And hopefully we can get a little bit of a discussion going um, that helps everybody. So there's a lot that I don't know about this yet because I'm just kind of getting into it. And so I want to be very upfront with that. And so if you have something to add to the conversation or even correct me if I'm wrong on something, uh, feel free to leave a comment and I would greatly appreciate that. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and order my stuff and uh, it should be here within the week. And so hopefully Hopefully, um, I'll probably spend some time this week shooting some color film as well, so I've got something to process. We'll do a couple test runs, and we'll look at how it works in the next episode. So anyway, once again, guys, this has been another episode of The Art of Photography. I'll catch you guys next time. Later.